What's up, fellow subscribers? Welcome back. Today might be Master Toy Museum. I'll be your curator today. Guys, we have another fantastic show for you today. Another excellent episode of Coffee, Coffee Time with MIB. Guys, today's topic uh, is a um, it's a fun one. It's, it's not one that I, 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 I want to really rant about, per se. Although, I can't promise that there won't be any ranting. <laughs> but uh, I have one question for you guys to open this show. What on earth happened to the Mattel retro action DC superheroes? Here today, gone tomorrow. A fantastic, a fantastic um, concept. Um, this was the closest little thing that we could get to Mego. Back in the, uh, oh my goodness, somewhere around 2009, 2010, somewhere around there. I remember seeing these these figures in Toys R Us and thinking to myself, hey, they look just like Mego. But they weren't Mego. They look like Migos. I mean, geniusly uh, styled outfits, head sculpts, accessories. But it still seemed as though something was missing from the Mattel uh, retro uh, action DC superheroes line. It just seemed like they weren't quite there and yet they were fun as you can see we have a few here in our our museum um, all of these guys are in fantastic condition um, save for one maybe my dark side was purchased on uh, they all all these guys are purchased on eBay but for some reason this one got a little dinged up there so I'll be getting adding another dark side uh, to our our museum collection, but he's perfect in uh, every other way. The cards uh, beautiful as the, the rest of these cards. Uh, guys, if you're just joining us, it's coffee time with MIB again. Um, we just we're we're trying to wrap our minds around what happened to the Mattel eight inch retro action DC superhero line. Why did they fade out so quickly? Um, Dr. Migo um, had some uh, some dealings with these guys, with, uh, with Mattel. He worked on this line. I would have liked to see Dr. Migo um, use his... I don't know how that played out. See, and that, that's... A, if, and if anybody... Um, any of our subscribers or viewers know exactly how the Dr. Migo and Mattel situation played out, we would like to know because I would like to know why Dr. Migo um, wasn't allowed or didn't use um, the Migo body type, the type 2 body. Instead, what you had was different bodies being used. Um, these guys are, as you can see, a little bit more uh, uh, muscular bodies. But there were a lot of issues um, with the waist area. Um, they were very loose, loosely made. So that the bodies, the, 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 the bottom half of the body would flop, you know, it was real floppy. Didn't They didn't stand very well. You couldn't really pose these guys very well. Now, that was in maybe the, the first few waves you know, as the waves kind of continued, 
the I heard that the the body's got a lot of it a, a lot better or a little bit better somewhere in between there. Did you own any of these figures? Uh, what's your thoughts on it? Here's another uh, point of reference. Um, I would like to see Mego come out with eight inch superhero action figures. Now I I, I understand uh, for some of my Mego uh, subscribers is gonna kind of uh, point this out to me that Mego has the the Stan Lee uh, Pow um, universe uh, line where we'll be seeing some uh, some superheroes that Stan Lee has created and had in his vault. You know, I would like to see how that comes out. But right now I'm talking about uh, classic superheroes that we know of. You're looking at uh, my one of my favorites from this particular toy line, a Mattel uh, Retro Action DC Superhero line, is my Green Arrow. The outfits on these figures were absolutely gorgeous, um, beautifully done, fantastic, and you had a you had a ton of superheroes, you had a ton of characters. Another one of my favorites, my Kyle Rayner. And I was told that I have the variant Kyle Rayner where his power ring, I don't know if you can see it on the side over there, you see his ring there on his hand, it was painted on. So that's a variant. It's a, And then they started to uh, have the, the ring molded on, but this ring was painted on, So, which made this... Um, very rare in a sense. First generation type stuff there. But for all of Mattel's shortcomings with this line, they did make the superheroes, the DC superheroes. And they did a very good job at it. Now, were they poorly made? Uh, as far as build build quality, uh, yes. But the outfits were absolutely stunning. Um, the head sculpts, uh, we're looking at our dark side here. The head sculpts were fantastic in every aspect. Card art was on point. I just think that Mattel did not give this toy line the attention that it deserved. Maybe I'm wrong, guys, and this is where the, 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 the I said earlier. I'm not going to try to rant, but I'm going to rant a little bit. Uh, we just we didn't have these guys out for very long. And I really would have liked to see Mattel. I would like to see a few more toy companies uh, come out with more Mego-like action figures. Um I don't, you know, I don't know what the toy companies are thinking about, but now that Mego is back and on the scene and and really doing a fantastic job, uh, the rest of these toy companies better take notice. Uh, they are under siege. They truly are. Uh, Mego is quietly taking over the market again. Um, these eight inch beautifully styled figures with with the, the cloth clothing is far more attractive than an eight or nine inch or six inch action figure that's made out of pure plastic. It, it, it just is. There, there's no comparison. When you're talking about attention to detail, we're looking at another one of my favorites, Sinestro. Uh, there's a variant of the Sinestro as well. But there is, there's, there's no comparison. Beautiful accessories, beautiful outfits. The works. Which is so frustrating to me about Mattel. 
and Mattel's inability to really market and get this this toy line to the next level or the next phase where we could have had a hundred something characters from this toy line pretty much what Mego is doing now and what Mego has done in under a year the just the ability to create so many characters from so many different genres in such a short period of time. And when you have Dr. Mego, you know, working with you, how on earth can you not get this toy line to the next phase, to the next level? Um, you put out some great figures. Um, we don't have the Batman and Superman. I'm looking for these guys, uh, but because I'm, you guys know me, we're a museum. We have to have these guys in perfect, perfect condition uh, or to a condition that's really to my liking, uh, which is perfect. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> which is uh, which is absolutely perfect. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy on that, guys. But um, we would like to know what you think about the Mattel um, retro action DC superhero line, toy line. Um, why did they fizzle out so fast? Cost production, um, bad timing, lack of interest. Um, we don't know. We just, we just don't know. Um, that's why I, I really enjoy the coffee time with MIB segment because we can get a lot of great insight and input uh, from our, you know, from our subscribers and our viewership. What happened to this toy line? It seemed like it could, you know, it could be successful. And it really paved the way and it kind of quenched our thirst as collectors, especially Mego collectors, to be able to go to a toy store again and purchase uh, eight inch beautifully styled action figures again. Guy Gardner. I mean, look at, I mean, just look at the attention to detail on these figures. Look at this, look at Guy Gardner's boots. Look how cool that looks. There's his lantern. What happened to this toy line? You know, I look around our museum and I see a lot of toy lines here at the museum at our museum that uh it just it's mind-boggling to me that they couldn't been they couldn't have been more successful it's it's just it's mind-boggling to me the consumers are there you know the money is there with the fan bases and with dc and marvel you absolutely positively would never go wrong. Absolutely. You just would you would never go wrong. So guys, we want your input, your insight on what happened with the Mattel retro action DC superheroes toy line. Would you like to see these guys come back out again? Because they did, they affected um, the market for such a short period of time. And it was a fun time to be a collector, to have these. You know, I look at a lot of uh, collectors uh, that I know and I see a few of these figures 
in their their collection. So it definitely had an impact. Guys, thanks for stopping by for a coffee, uh, a cup of coffee with us. You know the routine, guys. God bless. And keep collecting.